to do, then, hey, that would be great. But uh, we're thanking God for who and what he is in our life. Um, he is really, we've had an awesome move of God. This is day two of the awakening. Uh, yes, 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 praise God. Praise God, amen. This is day two of the awakening, and we're asking people if they can, uh, tune in at your leisure. Yes, amen. 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 Glory to God. Amen. Uh, moderator, you got something you want to say? I'm going to go check the other one because okay. I know that it's not on. Okay. It is on. You know, um, each time you guys don't see me for a long period of time, I, I actually am uh, praying and, and um, I'm asking God what else, what more, what more, what more, um, simply because this is a move of God like no other. And when I say like no other, I um, I'm blessed to be a part of anything that God is doing. Um, and I'm so thankful for anyone who is also feeling honored and blessed with what God is doing and what he has done in their lives. Amen. So the, the move of God is, is one that we have to get in on and ride the wave on it. Amen. Amen. And, um, the way that we're riding now is to stand up and uh, see uh, believers be who God called us to be, and to stand up and and refuse it to uh, be a part of anything that is unrighteous. Stand up and not be a part of anything that's unrighteous. Uh, so many times the the uh, body of believers has gotten a bad rep it's got a bad name simply because of those who are not believers simply because of those who are not standing up and doing what god has called them to do and they are getting in the way of things really amen um i i know that god does things well even when we don't know what all he is doing even when we wonder lord uh what else do we need to do and, and how much more will we uh be involved in this has been an awesome experience for me um what makes it so great is that i'm standing for righteousness amen and i'm and i'm not bowing my head to things it, uh, that go against what God says, we're actually speaking up on it and we're standing in unity and agreement that the ways that have been set forth that are not of God, we Amen. won't stand for. Amen. Amen. Um, so many people want things to happen, but what they're forgetting is that everything has to be in place for things to happen. Um, I'm always looking at and seeking what more can we do because um, I was looking at the Azusa Street uh, Amen. revival and how it all came about. They were on one accord. When are we going to be on one accord? Right. When are the body when is the body of Christ going to be on one accord and start speaking that those those that are not truly a part of the body of Christ are not a part of it? When do we tell them no, they're not Christians? What they're doing is not of God. Amen. We want to move, but we won't put those out. What did Jesus do with the the, the uh, unbelievers of the doubters. He put them out. When do we put them out of what is Christianity? They have no place in Christianity because they are not of God. They're not doing things the way uh, God sees fit for them to do. Remember tonight we did a teaching on the seven letters to the church and we found out out of seven churches, there was only one Amen. That God did not have an audience. 
Uh, there was wow. only one. Now, how amazing is that? Was that something new to someone? Well, no, I knew that he had, uh, there was only one church that was the true church. Mm -hmm. Well, I wouldn't even say the true church. The one, all of them had the opportunity. To, yes, they But did. Philadelphia mm -hmm. did it right. Yes. And isn't it funny that the word philios <laughs> means love, brotherly love. Right. And that's where the word Philadelphia comes right, from. Right, right. If we're not going to do it right. Don't do it at all. We might as well not even yes. do it at all. Yes. And too many Amen. times, I mean, people are looking for a feel good. Yes. I mean, I could give you a feel good, but what would it change in your life? Nothing. It's not going to change anything in your life. It's not going to make nothing in your life happen. Radical change brings radical results. Mm -hmm. You know, when a person has cancer, they say, we got to do radical chemotherapy. <laughs> I'm wondering myself, what is radical? That means they're going to give you a, a, a bunch of large doses mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and a bunch of radiation. Mm -hmm. Well, it's time for Christians to get radical with the message of Christ. I had a book. I don't know if I still have it. Radical. Mm -hmm. You still have it. It's on, uh, by the author is something flat. Yeah, my wife uh, made me get rid of some books. But uh, rad it's called Radical Christianity. Mm -hmm. I've never read it. I read some of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I remember wanting to read it. I'm just being honest. I've never read it. A guy told me, said it's an awesome book. Um. When are when are we gonna wake up? I'm woke. Are we gonna wake up when all our civil liberties are gone? <laughs> Everybody has rights now except the Christian. Yes. Mm -hmm. Christian can't do nothing. We can't talk about nothing. We can't mm -hmm. do nothing. Everybody else can say anything, anything they want, they do want. anything they want. That's right. I was watching a documentary where they ruled that the Ten Commandments on a Minnesota, uh, at the Minnesota courthouse was unconstitutional and they made a move. It. Then the Satanists came in and put in a big old statue of Balfour Matt. Mm -hmm. But that wasn't unconstitutional. Mm -hmm. No, they have a right. They have but a the right. Ten Commandments mm -hmm. is you, unconstitutional. You know, um, I went... <laughs> I um when I was very extremely active in my classes um at college, I took an American <laughs> history. Extremely, extremely active. active, yes. Um I had a heavy load at the time, but I took an American history class and, and I learned some things that really surprised me. Um how the early Puritans got they got here because they were oppressed where they were. And uh, I don't really know the amount of time that they had to uh, get out of where they were, mm -hmm. but the queen had given them so much time to get out. And if they had not gotten out by that time, then they would start eradicating them. Wow. And uh, so they they fled to the Americas. Um, tell me the story again. When the Puritans came, okay, to all right, I, okay. Because I thought you were talking about someone else. I'm up with you now. Okay, so when they got here, they, you know, were able to practice freely um, the, the Puritan way. Okay, and then the Puritan way uh, was supposed to be holy. <laughs> was supposed to be holy. Um, and uh, it started out supposedly being holy, but then they became oppressors. Exactly. They came here to be free because they were oppressed and then became oppressors. Excuse me? You wanted your liberty and freedom, and then you came here and did the same thing. So The Bible says, Envy not the oppressor and choose none of his ways. They did exactly what was done to them. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Probably did worse. 
You mm -hmm. usually, they use, if a person is hurt, they usually hurt the other person worse. Excuse me. But because of that, you know, I, I'm, I'm learning that history repeats itself. So when do we get on the loop of history that causes the great moves of God to repeat itself mm. instead of being closer to the things that we shouldn't be? Why aren't we getting closer to the things as Christians that we should? That's a good question. Mm -hmm. You know why? Because there's this cozy Christianity now. Mm -hmm. It's got to feel good to you. You know, you can warm up against it, but you don't like it, just throw it out. Mm -hmm. No pure righteousness. Nobody's standing up for pure righteousness. Well, I'm standing. Amen, sister. I'm standing because, you know, not only, I, I won't even say I'm tired of mm. being a sir. I want to see God move. I want to see. We have the right to call upon the name of Jesus and miracle signs and wonders. Follow. And we're going to get it. We we're, have that right. We're going to get what we ask for. We have the right to stand up for holiness and to expect God to move on our behalf. We not What only, happened? Why don't we? Who's standing up? Honestly. Think about it. Think about it uh, six months ago or a year ago. Were you standing up? Nope. Those that, those that are saying that they're Christians, were they standing up for God? Not not what they wanted, but for God, for righteousness, most, for holiness. Most people weren't. No. Most people weren't. That's just, that's just the truth. Most people weren't. So have you woke up yet? Who? I'm who? Have, you know, this is... This is the awakening. Have you woke up yet? I'm woke. Have you said, I'm going to stand for Christ, come what may? Have you decided that do or die, I'm in this with him? Or can you be swayed to the left or to the right? Well, you, most people won't even make a stand in... I don't even know how to say it. We... We can, when you know what you're doing is 100% God, mm -hmm. and you can't get people to even stand with you, not even 50%, 30%. When it's hard to get people to even stand with you, you know, they don't have to stand with me. But do you stand with God? I get. Do what you you're understand? I, I, well, let me rephrase it. Don't stand with me. Stand with the God that you see using me. Yes, yes. We yes. can't even get. You can't even get to do that. Yes. You know, people fall away so easily. You know, it, it's amazing how people want God. They want more of God, but whenever He presented to them, they well. You know, I know you're right, um, but, you know, just like this U.S. Air Force chick, when she said her friend said what she said, she could have easily said, you know what? I don't want nobody talking about me like that. So what I'm going to do is go and do my own thing and, mm -hmm. and not be that radical. You want a great move, then you have to do some radical things in order to get a great move. You have to stand up when everybody's sitting down. Do you know it? You know if we want to let's let, let's bring some stuff out that's true. Because I, you know, nobody did anything to me. I wasn't a slave. I, you know, I, I can't be mad at anybody, white or black, really. You know, I can't because because you wasn't there. I wasn't there, and I, I'm sorry, I wasn't there. Either. But sorry. um, just just listen to me for a minute. You know. When, I ain't going to right here. Okay. When they were oppressing African Americans and and things were happening and and uh people were standing up for their rights and their liberty and their freedom. Well, guess what? <laughs> Christian, your rights are being lost and your freedoms are being lost. 
So why aren't you standing up? It doesn't matter about a skin color now. It's about your faith and what you believe in Jesus Christ. Why are you not standing up now? You know, they had people linking arm in arm and didn't matter if they got hosed down and went to jail and didn't fight back. Well, guess what? You're losing your rights as a Christian. Losing them. They're probably. They're, they're just about gone. Any, anything goes. Except for total faith. Total reliance, total surrenderance unto God. Amen. Total reliance and total surrenderance unto God. You know, the day is quickly approaching where you have to truly be linked up with Holy Spirit. To guide you. Moderate, I believe it's here now. I, I do too. I do too. Anytime, anytime there is an, an such okayness with things that are not of God, mm -hmm. with, with things that go against the very nature of God, it is so freely, free and okay to do those things. You know, I, I I'm I'm getting a sense of what's been going on and why God wanted us to do this. You know, it's amazing how you can get on Periscope, YouTube, and uh, and Facebook, and you start giving false teachings, and you got a room full of people overflowing. Yeah. But you start telling people the truth and telling them what they have to change in order to be in the way that God wants them to be. They don't want that. They don't want that. They want the popular. Or start speaking in tongues for about three hours, and they'll sit there. Or start prophesying. Um, Prophesying? Yeah, blanket okay. prophecy. That's that's what mm -hmm. it is. Because out of their ignorance, they run toward gifts and not the giver. Let's be honest. Mm. And it is so sad. You know... Do you know that I'm praying that God has really seen our faithfulness? Because you guys don't know that sometimes we're talking to a zero and a zero and a zero. And there's no hearts and there's no thumbs up and there's no, there's just music on this phone. I understand that you guys need to, to go to bed for those that have been joining us. And I don't want you to feel bad because we're grateful for the time that you spend with us. But you know, the world never sleeps. So someone's always awake. Someone is always in need of God. Someone is always watching. It's just that tune into that. No, nah, that's okay. I want something else. I want the sounds in the background to be what I want them to be. I, me, and my is the reason why your life is so screwed up. And please don't think I, me, and my is going to get you to heaven. Doing what God called you to do is going to get you to heaven. And then, you know, I know that God allows us to be uh, tested. Oh, am I going to find where I, I forgot the scripture, but it says when he returns, he's going to, will, gonna, will, will he, he find, find faith, faith upon the earth? The earth? Will he find faith? You know what? Whatever zero was there, whatever a uh, person may have been on here to attempt to make fun of, my faith in, in God stands. I'm going to keep on. We got, th this is day two. We got two more days. This is the latter part of day two. My faith in God shall stand. I will do what he called me to do. If if he tell me to go out there and preach on the highway and nobody listens, guess what I'm going to do? Be out there talking. <laughs> and I can see you. I'll do it. Because when, okay. when do we show God how serious we are about him? When do we show God that no matter what happens, I'm going to stand with you? Amen. I'm not going to change the message so the numbers can go up. Ooh, 
say it, moderator. The message is going to stay the same because it's the same message that delivered me. It's the same message that set me free. It's the same message that got me out of the mess that I was in. It's the blood of Jesus. It is the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus. It's the same blood that gives me strength from day to day. It will never, 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 never lose its power. And no matter what it reached, it reached, it reached me. It reached me and it changed me. And that's what needs to happen to people. Amen. They need the blood of Jesus to cover them and get them out of the mess that, they, that they've allowed to come up on their lives. It's the choices that they made. I refuse to turn and go back. My God is greater, awesome in power. They sing these worship songs and don't even believe in them. Because if you believed in them, your life wouldn't be the way it is. And I don't expect anybody to be okay with what I'm saying, but the things that you're doing is causing you to go straight to hell. Guess what? I was there. Amen. You can say what you will. Oh, she making a fool of herself. Okay. You keep you keep looking. One day some pearly gates gonna open and you won't be able to get in. Because his word is true. He's coming back for a church without a spot or a wrinkle. Where is your faith in God? Where is it? It's in God as long as. As long as you still have a job, as long as you still have the government, as long as you still have brothers, as long as you still have sister, as long as you still have mama. You have to have faith in God when there is no one else. Amen. I applaud Miss Linda. Because when we were in a in in, in a um in a standstill, she didn't go back. She said she couldn't go back. When God deliver you from something and you know you've been delivered, go back if you want to. You'll kill yourself. You'll kill yourself. You know, we want miracle signs and wonder, but first of all, there needs to be some faith. There needs to be some real believers. There need to be some, some people who will stand for God. And the Bible, you know what? When I, in Sodom and Gomorrah, I got, I can't remember the numbers. He looked for, what, what's the numbers? Started with a hundred. Started with a hundred. All the way down to one, right? And he went all the way down to one. You know what? I to keep, I've been praying this for, for I know about three or four years. Lord, I'm one. Don't destroy us because I'm one. He destroys Sodom and Gomorrah for their nastiness, that for their filthiness. They sent there was an angel that went down, and guess what? They were so the two angels, they were so nasty, they were trying to get the angels. That's just nasty. When do you get so angry that you'll stand up no matter what, come what may, even if it costs you your life? It's supposed to cost you your life. It costs Jesus. It was okay for him to give up his life for you, but you won't give up nothing for him. You'll give up a little bit for him. He said, he that loses his life shall find it. Get lost in Christ Jesus so that you can find a life that's worth living. This is a message that we're teaching and preaching and people are not hearing or not taking heed to it because it's, oh, it don't take all of that. So. Oh, uh, you know, it's a good thing y'all doing, but where are you? What are you doing? Be a part of this good thing. How has your life changed? How have you shown that you've been delivered? How have you shown that God has been mighty to you? What have you done? Will he find faith on the earth. 
faith in him, faith in his righteousness. Not do what you want, do what you feel. Faith, faith, faith. Where is the faith in God? Where is it? Where is it? You know, it breaks my heart over and over and over to see people in the state that they're in because they choose not to do the will of God. But they choose to go along with what's popular. In, in I think it was the book of Luke, it said, this is a hard teaching. Who can do it? Who can follow it? Anybody could. But they're choosing not to. Anybody could follow it. They just have to choose to follow it. And then you have to follow it wholeheartedly. You know what, my friend? God will show you things. You know, I went out on the porch and God told me I ain't got nosy. He told me that. Mm. People, people are not listening to the voice of God. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, Lord, I'm not, I'm not lusting or nothing. He said, but you're nosy. Mm -hmm. You know? And this one needs to come up. And uh, you were telling me that I just be wanting to know stuff. Mm -hmm. Is your night? Is your life not good enough? Needs to come up. Some. This one. Yes. Is your life not In good enough? Right where it is. Don't you have enough to do with your own life? You should. And you know what? God is not gonna have to tell me that again. The one thing I love about really being saved is that when you really want God, God don't have to tell you two or three times. No. Nope. One time is sufficient. No, nope, one time. You know what you don't, what people don't realize is that the Bible says holiness without. Without holiness, no one can see the Father. All of you so-called people trying to try, thinking that you're going to make it in. You're going to get a rude awakening. You have to be blameless. You have to be holy. You have to be sin free. Free of sin in order to make it in. Holy means there is no sin in you. If you don't think that you can live a sin free life, then you, you've been deceived. And Satan has you right where he wants you. He has, he has you right where he wants you thinking that you're okay, and you're not okay. Woe unto the shepherd who scatters the sheep. Amen. You lying devils. You're lying to the people of God. You demon-possessed people. You're thinking that you are you have a place in the kingdom of heaven, and you do not. You have no part of it. You have no part. He's going to tell you, I don't know you. Who are you? Get away from me. Yeah. The only way we can enter into his rest is be a part of him. That's right. No, it's not a popular thing. But you know what? One day you're going to be wondering what happened. When the trumpet sounds and you don't hear it, and some are caught up and you're left here. Well, I thought, well, guess what? You're, you're not getting paid to think. You better find the sure thing. It's in the word of God. You can laugh at my Bible. It's tattered and torn, but I'm using it. I'm praying that God keep these pages together so I can follow every bit of it. Yeah. I'm praying that the word that he's given me, it gets down in here so that I can do what he said I can do. The day is coming so quickly approaching. Is he going to find faith in you? Very question. You say you have faith, but the day is coming where your faith will be tested right now. The day is arriving quickly that our faith is tested. When do you say, Lord, though, though you slay me? Yet, will, Yet I trust will I trust in you? It when do it. you say that if I have to stand all by myself, right. I'll stand. 
When do you say, you know, I do you know in my own home, I was standing by myself. I praise God. I praise God. I praise God that my, my family has gotten on the bandwagon with God has found holiness or, or has accepted it because it's always been there. I'm so thankful. But at some point, if they never did, was I going to remain? Was I going to remain faithful to God? Was I going to remain holy? Was I going to still fight for righteousness? Was I still going to stand on the word of God? I will stand on the word of God. I choose to stand on the word of God. Come what may, I'm standing on the word of God. Lord, you told me that you will take care of me. In the book of Matthew, it says, for after all these things, the Gentiles seek for your heavenly father knows that you need all things. God, you know what I stand in need of, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Where is God's righteousness? Are you seeking his righteousness? Are you seeking what you want? Are you seeking what you think is okay? Are you seeking what tickles your ear? Are you seeking what tickles your fancy? Or are you seeking his righteousness? His righteousness. And you know what? And he said all these things, everything else that you need shall be added unto you. It's, it'll be added, but seek his righteousness first because you don't want the wrong things added unto you and it keeps you out of heaven. Amen. Seek his righteousness first. You know, when people stop, stop preaching hell, fire and brimstone, look at what happened. Folks go to getting, uh, you go to getting home. stupid, ignorant, foolish. I'm going to call it the way it is. You, you have to be able to put your feet in the, in the sand and stand. And stand up when the waves are, are, are high. And they're coming in on the shore. You still have to be able to stand. You know, in the book of Matthew, it talks about the narrow gate. In uh, 7, Matthew 7. Starting at verse seven, this is what the word of God says. I'm always in the word of God because I need more of the word of God to sustain me and to keep me. I choose not to allow the world to take me and make me in what they want me to be. I'll be transformed by the renewing of my mind. I will not conform to the ways of the world. I don't care what happens. I choose not to conform to the ways of this world. The ways of this world has grown wicked. It wax worse. Matthew 7 and 7 said, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. You want to know if what you're doing is right? Ask him. Seek for what's right and you'll find it. Knock and it will be open to you. For everyone who asks receives and he who seeks finds. To him who knocks it will be open. Or what is, the, what is there among, excuse me, or what man is there among you who, if his son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or he asks for a fish, and will give him a serpent. If you then being evil, the devil sure know how to get his good gifts. Because he's doing it. Anytime you can go in and make a, make a bishop, a man, think that he is a man of God. And then a bishop. And give him a successful church. To where people running in and thanking God. If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, Satan knows how to do that. How much more will your father who is in heaven give you good gift, good things to those who ask of him? Lord, I'm asking of you to continue to give me righteousness. Allow me to see righteousness. Allow my spiritual eyes to see what you will for me to see. 
so I won't get caught up and be deceived, oh God. Verse 12, therefore, whatever you want men to do to you, do also to them, for this is the law and the prophets. I want man to be right, to do me right. So I'm going to do them right. And if you see me in a fallen state, you better tell me. Tell me. Tell me. Tell me God said your life is messed up. That you're not following God's way. Tell me. Verse 13. Enter by the narrow gate. For wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction. It's so many ways to get to hell. Sipping, tipping, dipping, lying, cheating, backbiting, false doctrine, false ways, homosexuality. Those are all ways to get to that'll lead you to destruction. Unforgiveness, hurt, pain. Those are all ways that'll lead to destruction. And there are many who go in by it. Many. And you know what? Here's the horrible thing. Somebody knew. Just like you knew you weren't right. Somebody knew they weren't right. But there was no one to labor with them. There was no one to spend time with them to show them the error of their ways. Just like you knew something was missing in your life, they knew something was missing in theirs. But you had a so-called Christian. They wasn't no Christian. They didn't have no faith in God. But they carried a title and they sanctioned this wrong. Again, woe unto the shepherd who scatters the sheep. That is not the way of God. Because narrow is the gate and difficult is the way which leads to life. You know what makes it difficult? Because you don't want to surrender yourself. You don't want nobody to talk about you. You don't nobody want to down you. You don't want to have to do it by yourself. You don't want to have to suffer for the sake of righteousness, for the sake of Christ. I'd rather suffer for the sake of righteousness than suffer and then end up and go to hell. I would rather suffer for the sake of Christ because Christ suffered for me. He suffered for me. He did it just for me. Jesus came and he did it just for me. Now, who are you going to do it for? When do you return the favor? The purpose is, the Bible says, go ye therefore into all the world and make, preach and teach and make disciples among men. Amen. So when you become a disciple, then go and get another disciple. Amen. Let's pull as many out of the mess that they're in as we can. Amen. Pull them out the fire. You were in the fire. Aren't you thankful? Aren't you praising God that you are no longer wrapped up, tied up, and tangled up in the mess that you work in? If you don't know what to tell somebody, look, I was just like that. I was just like you. And all I know is that Jesus freed me. And, and this is what he did to free me. He went to the cross. He died for my sins. I went to the cross. I carried my cross. I died for I died spiritually for my sins. And I was resurrected in him. When? When does the day come? When? The rest of the, ver the verse says, and there were few who find it. There's not going to be a lot who find it. But can we pull those in? Out of the mess. It is not okay to club on Friday and church on Sunday. 
It's not okay to lie on Monday. Amen. And read your Bible and think you okay on Wednesday. It is not okay. It's not okay. And for the person who thinks that it is, God forbid. Amen to that. You know, let's look at this in verse 15. Beware of false prophets who come to you, excuse me, Matthew's, Matthew chapter seven. Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inward. They are ravenous wolves. You will know them by their fruits. Oh my God. Are they holy? Are they righteous? If they're not holy and righteous, then guess what? Have nothing to do with them. Do men gather grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? How can we gather righteousness from an unrighteous man? We can't. But if you know that you are righteous, pass along righteousness. And don't be afraid of people. I I wasn't afraid when I went to people. Because you know what I said, Lord? When, When I opened up my mouth to talk to them, you have to tell me what to say. You have to give me what to say. Because I don't know what to tell them. All I know is what you told me. You have to be in place, be in position. And if you will allow God to use you, because so many people are falling away and they're lost and don't even know how to find their way. Remember the Bible says, there is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end there is, The end thereof is the way of destruction. There are many ways that leads to destruction. And there are many who go in by it. If you don't know if you live in the right life or wrong life, then you need to ask God. Lord, is what I'm doing of you it's what I'm saying of you. Lord, is this pleasing in your sight? And if it's not pleasing in the sight, change it. Verse 17. Even so, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. A lying tongue bears a lying tongue. A deceptive spirit bears a deceptive spirit. A manipulator bears manipulation. A thief bears thievery. A righteous man bears righteousness. A holy man bears holiness. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a bad tree bear good fruit. If we know that a person is living something that does not go along with the word of God, then it is a bad fruit. Nothing good is going to come of that. I don't care how high and mighty they think they are. I don't care how much truth they think they have. I don't care who sanctions what they're doing. I don't care if the president goes and approves it and gives them their own day. If it is not of God, then guess what? It's bad fruit. A bad tree cannot bear good fruit. An evil man cannot bring forth good things. His evil ways cannot bring forth good things. 
His ways that goes against the word of God cannot bring forth good things. Just look at your own life. Just look at your own life. Remember when. No matter how much you tried to do and, and, and be good, you just couldn't do it. Because at the time, you were a bad tree. It is God that makes you a good tree where you can bring forth good fruit. Only him. It's Jesus who washes you and cleans you up and makes you whole. In any other way you attempt to do it, it's not right. It's not righteous. It's not holy. It's not of God. I'm going to continue to preach the same message from the same word of God. It does not change. It is the blood that brings me strength. It's the blood of Jesus that brings me strength. Verse number 19. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Want to know what happens to your bad tree? It'll be cut down. Be cut down. You will be destroyed. Don't think you can continue in your unrighteous ways. Don't think you can continue with your false doctrines. Don't think you can continue with your false teachings. You will be cut down and put in the fire. Therefore, by their fruits, you will know them. The Bible tells us, test the spirit by the spirit. If it's of God, and if it's not. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my father in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name and done many wonders in your name? And then I would declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. Therefore, whoever hears these saying of mine and does them, I will liken, liken him to a wise man who built his house on the rock and the rain descended, the floods came and the winds blew and beat on that house and it did not fall for it was founded on the rock. It was founded on a solid foundation. But everyone who hears these saying of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who builds his house on sand. Most scariest words ever. Yes, yes, yes. Who wants to hear depart from me? You spent all this time trying to get to him, but you weren't doing it the right way. And he says, depart from me. You that worketh lawlessness, iniquity. I never knew you. I never knew you. Don't you want God to know you? You spend all this time searching and seeking and, and praying. Don't you want him to know you? Well, the only way he can know you is you, if you do it his way. You have to do it his way. Guess what? <laughs> Go back and read this. But everyone who hears these saying of mine and does not do them, some of them know to do it because they're reading it themselves, but they fool themselves. They lie to themselves. They've deceived themselves. It will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand and the rain descended, the floods came and the winds blew and beat on that house and it fell. You will not be able to stand when the day of judgment comes. And the great and the great was the fall. It wasn't a little bitty fall. It's a big fall. And so it was Jesus, it was when Jesus had ended these saying that the people were astonished in his at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. He didn't teach like everybody else. Guess what? 
We can't teach this like everybody else. We have to teach this like Jesus taught it, just like he taught it, with authority, knowing that it is the infallible word of God. And for all you who, who have this, well, it wasn't what Jesus said. God didn't write the Bible. Man did. Well, guess what? It is the inspired word of God. God wanted it in here, so he had man write it. Paul said that it wasn't Jesus. Guess what? Paul was of God. If you find a righteous man of God, listen to him. He be doing something right. Paul was a righteous man when his life changed. And, and Paul ran hard, and he ran with diligence. And he didn't take no for an answer. And he and he was not a weak man. Paul was courageous. I like Paul. I like Paul because Paul accepting nothing more than what God said. When he when he got right, yeah, he was slaying the Christians. But there's a thing called forgiveness. And Paul knew that he was, he was going to run this race to death. He knew it. He knew it. He knew it. He knew that he would have to suffer many things hmm. for Jesus' sake. Guess what? We do have to suffer many things for the sake of Christ. I'm going to tell you, I, I go on Periscope and I see people with 200 viewers or a hundred viewers and and I said well Lord I, I'm not that I want them with me Lord they're lost look at what they're following blanket prophecies I mean I can get on there and, and say everybody somebody is hurting everybody been hurt everybody been hurt somebody's got bills due everybody got bills due if you got lights, a roof over your head, and children that eat, everybody got bills due. Some, some, somebody needs a touch from God. We all need a touch from God. Blanket prophecies. Every last one of us need a touch from God. Because without a touch from him, how can we enter in? How can we be righteous without a touch from him? You've been waiting You've been waiting on God. You've been keep waiting on God. Well, guess what? We all been waiting on God. Tell me something that lets me know that you hear from God. Tell me something that I haven't told anybody. Let me tell you what happened with the, with the awakening whenever um, God was bringing it to pass. I didn't tell anybody at first. I was like, this man is not going to go for this, my husband. I sat down and I, well, I'm going to go back when we did the communion fast. <laughs> We've done a uh, fast before as a fellowship and and uh, we've had people join us in the fast with the fellowship. And it, this was the first time it was ever like this. First time ever. So I'm like, so I, I sit down and I, I'm like, okay, we need to fast because it was brought to us um, that, that, that there was an individual that said, I think we need to fast. So she, when she brought it to me, she said, pray about it. So I prayed about it. And I think maybe a week or two down the road, I was like, well, we're going to do it. I, I said, okay, Lord, well, we're going to fast. So I, I sat down and see, I like God to, I like God to make the vision plain to me. So I sat down and I got my paper and my pen and I wrote fast. And I was like, okay, what kind of fast, God? And I wrote communion fast. And I, I said, okay, we'll take communion. Oh, this is neat. Um, so I wrote down what we normally do. Fruit, vegetable, water. And immediately my hand went back and crossed out vegetable and water. I mean, vegetable and fruit. And I was like, um, and I looked at it again. Okay, communion and water. Hmm. I don't yeah. think we're going to have very many people fasting. <laughs> so 
I said, uh, I went to my husband. I said, you know, I believe God do want us to do a fast. He said, okay. How many days? I said, three. <laughs> you know, because that's what God told me. <laughs> and then I said, um, he said, okay, you, you got you got it. Because he knows. He said, you got everything wrote down? I said, yeah. I handed him the paper. <laughs> he said, what? I said, well, then I got the paper back. And I said, well, God said a communion fast. He was like, oh, a communion fast. He was kind of like me. Oh, a communion fast, neat. And I, <laughs> I said, uh. He said, so how are we going to do it? I said, water. I guess he was waiting for me to say the rest of it. <laughs> there was no rest of it. It was just water and communion. And I thought, well, Lord, if it's just going to be me, I'll do it. He said, oh, that's it? I said, yeah, that's it. And so I began to announce it. And I said, if you want, if you want the instructions on the fast and you know, just let me know. And and I said, uh, okay, God, I don't, I don't know who I'm going to do it, but I'm just going to tell them. And everybody that joined us in the fast got a breakthrough. Everybody. Everybody got a breakthrough. So I thank God that when we listen to him, that we get what we're supposed to get. Because even with this, you know, of course, we have our human expectations. I, I really did have human expectations. Oh, God, all these great things are going to take place. But you know what? What I want to know. This is what I want to know for those on the conference line. Have you? Do you have strength in God? Do you hear the voice of God clear? Has this been something that's been good for you? It's been good for you? Yes, it has. Do you feel uplifted? I do. Amen. 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 Did you have something else you wanted to share? Not at this time. Okay. Amen. Amen. What about you? Those that have been with us, do you feel uplifted? Do you feel some strength? Got some hearts. Amen. You know what? And God ain't say four days without no food. <laughs> no, you know what? I don't know. The day may come that he says that. And you know what? We'll do it. We'll do it. You know, some of us were feeling a little stale and stagnant and still. That's all they had. And you know, I, I I have found my help. I feel rejuvenated. Me too. I'm loving the word. Yeah, you speak. I thought, Lord, for the age, 24 hours, it's just me and him. God, how are we going to do this? He's done better than I have. <laughs> but when we do it in Jesus' name and when we do it obedient, obediently and willingly, We'll eat the good of the land. Will. I'm excited because I'm like, Lord, my obedience gets me something. It gets me a big prize, you know. Even if it's that I'll stand up when everybody else will sit down. Even if I'll keep moving when everybody else stops. It's better than what some people are doing. And there is, this is just the beginning. Just the beginning. Because I've lost my life. Therefore, I have a life in him. And it's much, far much greater than what I started out with. I'm telling you. When I tell you I truly am stress-free. The only thing I think about is more of him. I love it. Want some more of it. Can't get enough of it. And it brings me great joy and great pleasure to be amongst people of God who really love him. He'll go to the end of the earth for him. Who will jump off the cliff for him. If I was teaching some old junk, you guys wouldn't be here. 
But if I was because you I know would. because you know the word of God, I would. Huh? I would. You would? If I was teaching junk? You my wife, I still would. <laughs> I hope you correct me. Yeah, I tell you, I don't know what you're doing, but <laughs> I wanna be corrected whenever I'm outside, out of line. <clears throat> I want God to bless everything that my hand touches. Amen. I want him that I want the very breath that I breathe to be a blessing to someone. But I can't do it unless I know what he wills for me. And he wishes that I he wills that I do what his word says. Amen. I get in the word and then I get off and I get back on and but it's an awesome time. It's awesome. This is I, I didn't even know how this was going to feel, how it was going to be. I didn't know. And I, I don't know who else didn't know what to expect. I, I didn't know what to expect. Amen. I ain't gonna leave. But I sure do thank God. You know, I, I was uh listening to a doc documentary on Azusa Street where they um, begin to, when, when the people start flocking in, and this is how they start flocking in, in, in San Francisco, I think it was, they had uh, an earthquake at the same time, a big earthquake, and it demolished part of, I think it was San Francisco, and um, Los Angeles got a couple of shakes, and they wrote about it in the newspaper how the people of God said the end times are near. So people begin to flock into <laughs> they begin to flock into um, the building to hear what the man of God had to say. Therefore causing a great stir of the Azusa Street Revival. I said, Lord, you don't have to do that here. I don't want an earthquake, but if that's what it takes, I don't know we're going to put all the people. But if that's what it takes. Send them to the Civic Center, let them get in front of the computer. <laughs> you know, people don't realize what it takes. Yeah, they do. What they're not doing. What they're not doing. They know what it takes to be one with God. Everything that they're not doing, that's what it takes. And because they don't want to be one with God, they say they want to be one with God, but only just enough to have the title, but not have the lifestyle. I didn't even realize how much word was in me. Every time we get in front of the camera, God has given us something new. USA chick should be getting sleepy. Are, are you are you about bedtime, US Air Force chick? She be my best. She been hanging in. And She's been up a long time. What time did she get started, ma'am? Oh, <laughs> it was really early. Well, head moderator started earlier than I did this morning. You're struggling. <laughs> well, when you know what, when bedtime comes, I understand. Tell them don't feel like they gotta. I I appreciate those that are hanging in, but I'm gonna tell you if the screen go black, we still going. You still going. We still going. If there's not a person. I will see you in the AM. I thank God for you, and you have an opportunity to uh, to to uh, call in anytime. That U.S. chick, she started really early this morning. Oh, oh, amen, what? amen. So I appreciate those that. Yeah, you should be sleepy now, U.S. Air Force chick, because you started really early this morning. I remember she, I remember she came on really early this morning. Guess what our Islander did? What? Uh, it was like three in the morning. Uh -huh. 
Yeah, she came on really early and, uh, too. I don't even think she was. No, it was like one. I don't even think she <laughs> she was awake. <laughs> she just had it going, and maybe she had it planned. Thank God for that. You know what? Good night. Good night. It's obedience. Amen. It is obedience. That's what it is. Amen. Obedience is better than sacrificing. I you hot. Amen. See you in the morning. Um, what are we discussing? Well, I I finished off uh, chapter seven. Okay. Is it on? Or is it off? Believe it or not, I really don't. I'm not hot. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, it's about 10. It's going on quarter to 11. Uh, why don't we reboot everything? You take your little break. Go get you some water or something. Let the lead moderator get her some water. Okay, get her some juice or something. And uh, I'm here with you guys. I am here. Amen. I'm excited. That is just awesome. Man, he is just awesome. You know, there's a song, and he keeps on doing great things for me. God is so awesome. God is, I don't even know what to say. Um, he's great, you know. Thank you guys that have put time in with us. God bless you for it. Um, we appreciate it. Um, we pray blessings over you and your family. We pray that God would meet you where you are and would we'll, we'll give you increase. You know, it's um, it's an awesome task to do the work of the Lord. It, uh, it requires dedication. It requires commitment. It's not always the easiest thing in the world to do uh, because you want to be, of course, found giving God your best. And uh, I haven't always given God my best. Uh, God came second or third or if he even came at all. And my life reflected. Uh, I wanted to find a way to get out of what I was going through but I never would commit. When I finally decided to commit to God wholeheartedly, that's when a change came in my life. Um, that's when a change came in my life. If your life is not where you want it to be, and things aren't going the way you know that they should go. It's time to look for a change. Uh, try something new. Try God. Um, everybody knows about him. Um, sometimes, according to who we are and where our mindset is, he's often duplicated. He's duplicated by religion. He's duplicated by false gods. He's duplicated by an idea of righteousness. Just an idea. Often duplicated. But never imitated. No one can imitate God. Because no one can do the things that he do. You know, when God started to really open my eyes to what he required of me, Oh, boy, I wasn't as, uh, I don't know what the word for it was. I wasn't jumping up and down. Because um, he asked me to give up some things that I really wanted to hold on to and keep. But, you know, God is still He's still my everything. He's still my rock. 
my sword, my shield, he's still my everything. Uh, he's everything to me. He means everything to me, and he does everything for me. That's not a bad deal. Come to God and allow him to change your life, allow him to change your situation, and allow him to change your circumstances. You know, I remember many years ago when I started in sales, the guy that trained me how to sell insurance, he told me to take my goals and write them on a piece of paper. You know what I challenge you to do? I challenge you to, if you're just starting out, you don't have to do but one. Write a goal for you and God. Let me give, let me give you an example of what I mean. Every day I'm going to read the Bible for 10 minutes. 10 minutes may not seem like a lot, but if you're not reading it at all, it's, it's a whole lot. It's better than what you were doing. Don't make goals for yourself that are so overwhelming that you don't keep them. Okay, it would be nice to say, well, I'm going to read, read the Bible 30 minutes every day. And you're not reading it at all. What you do is you make a, a goal that's too high for yourself and you end up not keeping it. So start small. I'm going to read the Bible about 10 minutes every day. I got one better for you. Most of us have a smartphone. Listen to the Bible. Uh, you could be doing something else while you're listening to it. I promise you it'll, it'll go into your spirit, man. Listen to the Bible for 30 minutes every day. And watch how it changes you and it changes your life. When I begin to put more God in my life, I saw more God coming out of my life. I don't know if that makes sense to people. What I mean when I say I saw God coming out, I saw the characteristics of God. I stopped screaming and yelling. Things didn't frustrate me as quick as they did. The more God I put, things really don't bother me. When I tell you they don't, Sometimes things rub me the wrong way, but it doesn't last. It's over in five or ten minutes. It's gone so quick. Because the love of God, the joy of God, and the peace of God overtakes my heart, overtakes my mind, and overtakes my intentions and my soul. It calms me down faster than I know what to do. That's the love of God. I, I can only say this for anybody that wants a better way of life. Meet God at the crossroads. What, what I mean when I say meet him at the crossroads, go to God and tell him, look, Lord, tell him how you feel. People say you this and people say you that, but I don't see it. Why don't you show me some of these great things? You're not going to hurt God's feelings. Matter of fact, the results just may surprise you. That's how I got my deliverance. Because I told God, okay, it's real for this person. It's real for that person. It just don't seem real to me. I don't care how much Bible I know. It don't seem real. Because I can't do it. I'm not living it. So why don't you make it real to me or else? My life changed that day, but God knew that I was serious. I wasn't joking. It wasn't something I was saying just to make myself feel good. When your life changes, your outlook changes. Your expectations change. Amen. Amen. God... You know what? God wants you to have a happy life. 
He wants you to have your best life. Find something. I'm going to read you something. This is kind of a long chapter. I'm going to read it to you. I hope it will bless you and give you hope. It's Jeremiah, the 30th chapter. The word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord saying, Thus speaks the Lord God of Israel saying, Write in a book for yourself all the words that I have spoken to you. God told him, get a book and write it down. For behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, that I will bring back from captivity my people Israel and Judah. Says the Lord, I will cause them to return to the land that I've gave to their fathers and they shall possess it. No matter where you are, God is calling you to return back to him. No matter what you've done, no matter how far you've fallen, no matter what has happened, God is calling you to return back to him. And when you return back to him, he gives you a love, he, has, he gives you a place unlike any other. God wants you. He wants you He wants you to pardon me He wants you to do that which pleases him. Give me a minute. I'm, I apologize. I'm just getting everything back up. We're about to get into the lesson.